Hi, I started building my country chair around about um, 11 months ago, yeah, last December, and uh, I decided not long after starting it that I really needed a shave horse, which is this, um, to help me along. So you may have seen my project building the shave horse, but unfortunately after doing that other things cropped up in life which meant uh, this had to go on the back burner. So it's now November, almost a full year later, and I'm just about getting around to finishing it off. Or should I say, continuing the build. I've got my legs, what am I talking about? They're not legs, they're spindles, which I cleaved from a piece of apple. I did that uh, 11 months ago. So they've all dried out an awful lot now, which is a bit of a shame, because it's gonna make those a bit more difficult to shape. And I had previously got my seat, which was inspiration for the, the, the whole chair in the first place. And that was drilled out again uh, last December. And that shrunk, so those holes aren't quite round anymore. Anyway, I'm going to try and finish it off, and I uh, hope you enjoy the build. This was the end of a plank of oak that I'd used for something else and it had a slight uh, wobble across its width which looked uh, reminiscent of a carved out uh, chair seat so I thought since the, the length of it was just about long enough to make a, a child's chair that I would uh, make for the first time a country chair and as you can see here I'm not making any measurements it's all by eye the layout of the actual seat shape uh, the scooped out area where the spindles for the back are going to go and where the legs are going to go in. So I'm trying to do the whole build um, without measuring anything exactly and also as you can see here using hand tools. So we'll see how I get on. I'm trying to master the art of slow hand drilling. The theory is if you go slow enough you won't get tired, you won't raise a sweat and it's very relaxing, the sound of the, the drill cutting through at such a slow speed uh, is rather relaxing. Uh, in fact, some would say quite soporific, so I do hope none of you are falling asleep yet. A wooden maul or a uh, rough wooden club would be much better than the metal club hammer I'm using here as this does tend to damage the back of the blade but thankfully this wood splitting really quite easily without having to rain down heavy blows on the back of the blade anyway I shall be making a maul at some point in the future So my first job is taking the spindles uh, that I started last year and fitting the ends so that they'll go into the seat holes for the uh, back rail. And that's where the shave horse really comes into its own. It's, uh, I was always quite amazed that I built this out of a pallet and yet it works so well. So the tip of that one is just fitting now into the spindle holes. I want to carve out some of the seat, make it nice and comfortable. And the traditional tool, I guess, would be a scorp. And uh, well, I'm not used to doing this. It's the first time I've done it. I normally use a power carver to do this sort of thing on a seat. So I've just been having a little go, and it's a lot more effort than I would have thought. But hey, let's stick with it. I decided to do some of the heavy work with uh, a gouge. Thank <laughs> you. 
I found a couple of photographs of uh, when I was lining up the holes for the back sticks or spindles. Uh, just showing how I use a, a pencil in one that I've already done uh, to match the angle. So I mirror them from one side to the other. Nothing on this chair is measured. I'm editing this video about two weeks after doing this uh, sawing out <coughs> and uh, I still remember how tiring it was. With the end of the spindles sized nicely to the holes in the seat, it's time to extend those tenons so that they go most of the way through the seat. And I also start the shaping process, uh, which isn't really rounding over, but it's just taking away all the sharp edges. I want the backrest to be level in this chair, so I'm just using an offcut as a gauge here to mark off a level line around the spindles now that they're installed. This just gives me an idea of where I want to start the tenon on the top of the spindles. So I've completed putting the tenons on the top there. Uh, it all start at a level line and they're all as perpendicular as I can get them so that the top rail will go on nicely. Uh, the spindles are installed all but about an eighth of an inch. So you just need tapping home when I put the chair together. You just don't get the, uh, the same pleasure when you're doing this with uh, a router and a sander. Uh, using hand tools is just uh, so much more pleasurable. So I've been using the draw knife, spoke shaves and the in shave just to refine the shapes of the seat. As you better see here, I've inverted the, the seat on its uh, spindles and used a couple of props to get it up a uh, level, uh, just marking round and then sawing off the top of the spindles nice and, uh, and level with the seat. Now I'm marking that out onto a piece of paper and drawing a curve which will represent the, the shape of the back that I'm trying to make. Good use of the older uh, flexible shaft from the drill. Now I thought I'd attempt to make the back uh, by steam bending some oak that I had. I'm just uh, ripping down a couple of sections of oak uh, that I can use for that. Uh, but also, uh, because the grain on this is uh, not particularly good for bending, I'm going to be cutting out a back from this piece of elm, which will be uh, perfect if the steam bending doesn't go too well. Obviously I've drawn it out and now I'm just uh, using it in reverse to transfer the marks across onto the piece of elm. This has the benefit that I have a pattern from the inside curve to do my steam bending on. So it's back to the frame saw and cut that out. Thanks for watching, if you join me next time you'll see me continuing the chair and also trying a bit of steam bending.